In his new book, Outlive, renowned Dr. Peter Atia took a close look at what made healthy 100-year-olds so different to the rest of us. He was looking for clues such as lifestyle or specific gene traits, anything to help him understand how these people power into their hundreds, often in good health. Peter looked at Richard Overton, who reached an amazing 112. His secret? A good cigar washed down with a glass of bourbon every day in his later years. Hmm. He took a look at another one. Englishman Henry Ellingham, who reached 113 and who said his secret to a long life was whiskey, cigarettes and wild, wild women? None of which made medical sense. Perhaps the women themselves would reveal more usable data. So Peter looked at Jean Calmon, the oldest officially recorded person in history. When asked what she did to reach her incredible age of 122, she mentioned it may have been the fact that she got everywhere by bicycle up to the age of 100. Exercise. Things were going somewhere. But she smoked cigarettes to the age of 117 and ate a pound of chocolate a week. Obviously none of which could explain her radical outlying age. Critical data was missing and Peter was going to have to dig to find it. What was the real secret? According to much of the existing research on centenarians, how they achieve their great age has little to do with any healthy behaviours at all. Most of them live longer lives in spite of their behaviours and not because of them, but there must be a reason. For Peter Atiyah, this is a personal question. He lost one uncle in his 40s to heart disease, another uncle died in his 50s of the same thing, and one uncle made it to his 60s before also succumbing to heart disease. With little to no prospect of genetic assistance, how can a man like Peter achieve what the great centenarians seem to have done? Hold on, wait up. This is the part where I tell you that although 25% of why healthy 100 year olds reach their age is genetic, 75% of this is a mystery involving environmental factors, emotional health, lifestyle and plain old good luck. This mysterious 75% is the space Outlive seeks to exploit through finding answers to a big question. The question to solve was this, can we through our behaviour somehow reap the same benefits that centenarians get free via their genes? Can we mimic the centenarian's phenotype, the physical traits that help them resist disease and live so very long, even if we lack their genotype? Can we outlive our own life expectancy if we are smart, strategic and deliberate about it? Peter Atia believes this is possible and lays out the foundation for his strategy in Outlive, which I've enjoyed listening to as an audiobook. And the biggest game changer for me, Peter's detailed exercise program. With his expert guidance, I've optimized my routine for longevity in later years. Most of what I do is what Peter calls classic stage two cardio exercise, essential for healthy living, and for helping me personally sidestep some of those illnesses lurking in my family's medical history. But with a few tweaks, the time I spend exercising has become more targeted towards longevity. The first of these tweaks, introducing VO2 max training into my cardio. At Peter's suggestion, I run for four minutes at a level of cardio output, which allows me to comfortably hold a conversation. Then I charge at maximum intensity for four minutes, going as hard as I can. There's a perfect hill in my neighborhood, which I throw myself at. Then I coast home at a gentle jog before leaping on my cross trainer for another high intensity four minutes before coasting along again. Then I repeat this pattern and do so once per week. But why do this at all? Well, after our 60s, VO2 max levels typically plummet. But the higher these levels are when we reach these years, the higher they will stay, giving us better cardio health even in our 80s, which puts us in a stronger position for that goal 100 and healthy. The other way Outlive has changed my life is rucking. This involves packing heavy weights into a backpack, in my case 20 kilos, and going for a good long walk. It can be exhausting, so why would I do this to myself? Because unlike most gym routines, this will work me deeply in the core, legs and spine in such a way as to improve my stability. And stability is one of the most important factors in a long healthy life, because it's a lack of stability that causes older people to fall and injure themselves. And if I arrive in my 80s with strong stability, I've got a better chance of going all the way. I love these life extending strategies and will be diving further into Peter's research into how we can all hit 100 and healthy. So if you have a sincere interest in extending your lifespan and healthspan, hit subscribe. Please tap the like button to help my channel grow and stay well.